the dynamic of I and you proliferates through the, this well-known wheel. A chain of origin. Consciousness, name and form. Sensory fields, contact, sensation, formation, attachment. And each point of contraction becomes a new point of cause for geometrically expansion expanding, proliferating effect, each of themselves becoming new cause. It's easy to see how we so swiftly lose track of who we are, where we are, But if this position follows, nothing has really occurred. That which we call God, that formless, inconceivable consciousness, has sought to express itself. But being conscious inside the creation is this proliferating chain of obscuration that produces a, a very decisive effect of forgetfulness. In this phylogenic chain, it seems like all the trouble starts with the reflex of I, the reflex of separation, the ego. It's faithful servant, the list-making capacity of intelligence, the intellect that is so dynamic through the idea, the chain of separate origin, Consciousness, name and form, sensory field, contact, sensation, attachment. Because what do we do as ego? We take possession of the chain of our experiences and by virtue of the definition of that chain of experiences, we cause that list to serve in the seeming ever intensifying existence of separate identity. Every reflex of the ego serves to strengthen the idea of separation between I and you. The wise tell us that it is this reflex the reflex of separation the egocentric eye and its hunger for experience through name and forms sensory experience etc that we take possession of All of which we could clearly say come under the heading of ignorance and desire. What do we feel at the base essence of our nature but a kind of yearning 
are yearning to know ourself. And having accepted the terms of the ego, we seek to know ourselves, or we desire to know ourselves through a constant flow of experiences. That's we're born into each life with this hunger. As we come through the worm gate, the womb gate, our power seems to grow. And we gain, gain the power to absorb incredible experiences and get higher and higher and higher. And everything seems possible, but then something seems to happen, a quality of decay, a failing of strength begins to occur. The body wears out. falls away and dies. And we're produced again as nothing. And I like that, the worm gate. <laughs> As kind of a science fiction thing. And it does. It functions just like a wormhole. It always starts here. And you have to go through the whole wormhole and come out in some other universe. You have to take the whole ride. The wise tell us thus that it is the belief in an eye. And the yearning hunger for experiences that we call desire as the root of all suffering. The ego. The ego is the root the basis of I. So here on the second day of the retreat in this incredible living presence of God, we're going to go big game hunting. We're going to flush out the terrible demon of the egocentric eye. A set of clues to aid in the hunt that will help us in our search. In this way, as the hunt is afoot, we won't end up looking like a bunch of drunks with floppy canvas hats trying to catch Grunion on the beach at midnight. It's true, I probably read too much Charles Bukowski. We can start with a great story. It comes from the apocryphal, which is stories and tales of history that are unattributed. This one comes from a wandering Siddha. and a report of his wanderings in samsara. A 
wandering through the countryside, he came across an incredible scene, a woman with a baby at her breast, eating a fish and throwing the bones of the fish to a dog that was carrying them. Because the Siddha was enlightened and could see perfectly through the chain of cause and effect, he understood an amazing thing that the mother was the daughter of the fish and the dog who had both recently died. They had lived in strife. That she was, the fish was her mother, and that she was consuming her mother in the form of a fish, throwing her bones to a dog that was yapping at their heels. Who was her father? And that the baby at her breast was an enemy who, in their last dying breath, had vowed revenge and to bring her harm. He stood and looked upon this incredible scene and broke out laughing. This is the wild and convoluted nature of samsara. As it consumes itself, like a snake consuming its own tail, following this incredible chain of cause and effect. The story is at once very dark and very funny. <laughs> 